Hi guys, Kchak here, World of Warcraft billionaire. And today I'm going to be doing something slightly different. I'm going to be looking at what my plans were going into the War Within. So that's going to cover all my pre-expansion plans, what actually happened during release, what I did to adapt to the situations that did occur, and how the whole thing generally played out for me. I'm going to cover three professions in particular. So we're going to look at engineering, enchanting, and alchemy. Engineering has definitely made me the most gold, although definitely not how I was imagining I was going to make gold from it. Inscription has probably made me the most gold when it comes to sort of war within professions, but I'm not going to cover that today because that wasn't part of my pre-expansion plans. But I do have a video coming about inscription in particular. That will likely be the video I do after this one. Now, I know you guys love mailbox openings. I did what I could, but I was... Uh, changing auction house characters a lot depending on what I was doing on various accounts so I've only had this one maybe three or four days but there's some stuff to open here at least anyway so let's talk about engineering to begin with then so we all saw the engineering mount quite early in the beta and we obviously knew what were coming the parts for the new mount come from pilfering through parts so that's mostly you're going to use engineering stuff from previous expansions Literally, on the beta, I knew the exact drop rates for everything. I had spent dozens of hours pilfering through parts for all the different parts that you could use. I knew the exact drop rates for everything. Ceravite bolts were absolutely insane at the time on the beta. So I figured out, based on my crafting costs uh, on live, that I could actually craft one of these mounts for about 400k gold. And considering the vendor price for the mats was about 3.2 million gold, that was looking like a pretty good start to the expansion. It seems Blizzard thought that the Ceravite bolts were a bit too good as well, so they nerfed the drop rate sort of halfway through the beta, and they changed it so it could only drop Bountiful bolts, which is the most uh, basic part to the new engineering mount, which you get loads of. So basically just nerfed the Ceravite bolts into the ground. To be fair, it was pretty insane getting sort of pummel permits, which is the um, vendor mat that costs a million gold, and I was getting it from these Cerebite bolts that were costing me less than, you know, one gold each to craft on live at the time. The only issue was by this time, I'd been crafting Cerebite bolts for weeks across four accounts. I had millions of them stocked up in guild banks. And at this point, they felt sort of fairly useless, to be honest, because they weren't very good for uh, getting the engineering mount parts at all. So I went back, I did all the drop rates, all again for everything. And I found that greased gears were um, pretty good at giving all the different mount parts um, to, to, to the new engineering mount. Now you can use parts from almost any expansion and there are parts that you can use that are as good as greased gears, if not better. But the issue I had was that I needed something from Dragonflight because I needed that amount of materials on the auction house to be able to craft in the sort of quantities that I had. Even using Dragonflight materials, I felt like I was constantly running out of materials on the US region auction house. So Rousing Fire I was buying out all the time. Draconium ore I was sending the price absolutely through the roof at times just to be able to keep crafting these greased gears. I even got to a point where I was so desperate for Rousing Fires that I had to do the most tedious thing possible. I was buying awakened fires and having to manually convert them to rousing fires. Luckily, you can do that while you're crafting, so you just sit there pressing the freaking button while it's crafting away and you're watching YouTube or whatever. My aim for the start of the expansion was to have 3 million Cerebite bolts and 3 million grease gears ready to go by the time the expansion launched. The plan for launch was to simply have four accounts pilfering through parts all the time and then I was going to be playing on the fifth account. So these accounts would be set up so they'd have the talent so they could get the uh, new mount engineering parts and all the plus to uh, rusted scrap drops and they'd also have the new engineering bag which also gets plus to rusted scrap as you are pilfering. I was hoping to have all this set up maybe sort of five to six hours after release. It wasn't my number one priority but it was something I wanted to get onto as soon as possible. Uh, and then I could obviously just have them all pilfering in the background while I was doing other stuff on that fifth account. So after all this planning and preparation and crafting, 
Would you believe me if I actually told you I had no interest in the engineering mount whatsoever? My aim was basically to sell the mount or sell the mount parts. And basically what I wanted from that was to break even on the pilfering. My main goal was actually to get the rusted scrap that you get as a byproduct from pilfering. So the actual mount parts, which was which is what most people were going for, that was just basically to pay my expenses. And if I broke even from that, and without the economy looked, it looks like that would have actually worked. Uh, so if I broke even from that, then all that rusted scrap I got would basically be free. And I would have been getting millions of rusted scrap. I would scour through scrap through these millions of rusted scrap that I've saved up from this process. And I'd basically be getting tens of thousands of engineering parts for the war within. So the rank three ones were selling for absolutely insane prices. Some of them were going for like 10,000 gold each. Uh, in the early days of the expansion. So that's fine. That's a little bit of a payday. The rank ones and the rank twos were going to feed a fifth engineer. So that fifth engineer was going to be one that was going to do a mini artisan security shuffle. And he was going to be a hardcore profession crafter, sort of day one of the expansion. And he's going to have basically an unlimited supply of rank one and rank two materials. He'll be able to craft all the best um, sort of uncommon rank five fashion gear sort of right at the start of the expansion and you can just craft loads and loads and loads of it and that was going to get spread out all the way across the U US region uh, and hopefully make quite a bit of gold from that in the process. So the main thing I was actually aiming for from doing the process was selling all the rank free engineering parts which the prices were insane on and then massively massively producing all the rank five um, profession gear at the start of the expansion from engineering when all the other engineers are sort of distracted by the mount, I've just made a beeline straight for the profession gear. The whole idea that you can turn sort of last expansions materials into the new expansions sort of materials is it's insane. At the end of an old expansion, the material prices are basically nothing. And the new expansion, the material prices are just insane. So the idea that you can on the process leading up to an expansion, just turn that old Cerro of Light Ore rousing fire into your new stuff from the war within. It's just absolutely crazy when, you know, the ore prices and everything was absolutely through the roof. So that's the main thing was turning last expansion stuff into this expansion stuff early on when you know prices were gonna be absolutely insane. That's not how it turned out. So first things first, I only had uh, one account pilfering on the beta, which is fine. But once I tried pilfering on four accounts, my PC just melted from the process. So for some reason, it does not like crafting with uh, engineers in particular. Crafting on multiple accounts isn't usually a problem for most other crafting professions, but it doesn't like it for engineering whatsoever. And it couldn't cope pilfering through parts on four accounts. It just, it just wasn't having it. But that wasn't the main reason that I didn't carry on doing this. The second thing, the price of greased gears and cerevite bolts just went absolutely nuts when the uh, expansion got released. There's always a chance that something like this is going to happen when you go, when you're having these um, raid releases, patch releases, expansion releases, that the price of something like this can go crazy. But like I've said on my investment videos before, you can't rely on it. And I wasn't relying on it. I had a plan on what I was doing with these things. But when the prices do go up, you know, you start having to think about what are you actually doing with your plan? Is it worth it or do you cash in here? So my crafting cost for greased gears, I think was about eight gold in the months leading up to the expansion release. By Saturday on the early access, they were at 35 gold each. Uh, and by the following Friday, they hit over 60 gold each. The Cerevite bolts cost me less than one gold each to craft. These were like over 10 gold in no time. And I've seen them at 12, 13 gold at times. So I was getting sort of like 13, 14 times my investment on return for those. Yes, I had a plan with engineering coming in. I'd invested tens of millions of gold into these engineering parts. But the prices was literally five, six, ten times what I had paid for crafting them in the process. So, so I just cashed in. As simple as that. And... They were selling at absolutely insane rate as well. So it was I was frequently getting sort of 1.5, 2 million gold 
an hour in sales just on my bank character that I was using to sell Dragonfly engineering parts. That's all it was selling, nothing else. And it was selling like 1.5, 2 million gold an hour. Absolutely crazy. So I cashed in. I don't know exactly how much gold I made from engineering as a part of this, but it was quite a lot considering that the um, the prices were sort of like five, six, up to 10 times what I paid in my crafting costs. And I did spend sort of, you know, s several tens of millions setting everything up. So yes, it's a nice little profit to start the expansion. Not exactly what I was expecting, not exactly how I was expecting to make the money, but you know, it did the job. And just as importantly, it freed up a lot of time. So I'm not messing around pilfering on four accounts because of that it gave me time later on in the in that sort of first week to set up some more crafters which i didn't plan on doing originally and that's made me more gold that's made me quite a lot of gold as well having that extra time to do other things so enchanting was another profession that i was looking at and i always have the same strategy with enchanting that's rush to be region first world first whatever just First to market, get there, cash in on the region wide auction house while sales are good. And then once the competition starts, you know, sort of really coming in, then I get out of it. So the problem you have with enchanting is it's this sort of market. When it's good, it's really, really good. But it crashes and burns unlike any other market in WoW. So it it only takes sort of one to two other people to be able to do what you can do. And you will soon get to a point in enchanting where you basically you've got no profit margin on your sales and your profit margin is whatever you get from a resourcefulness proc so it's pretty crappy so what i tend to do cash in while it's good once that cancel scanning starts to get a bit bad i'm just like no i'm out in dragonfly i made about 80 million in about a week from enchanting on the region-wide auction house so i was hoping I didn't know how it was going to work because we have this really weird release schedule with early access and I did underestimate how much that was going to affect things when it came to sales. But anyway, so I figured out with a with a sort of half decent artisan security shuffle, then I could unlock the rank three enchants really, really quickly. It could have been done within 24 hours if I wasn't messing around with other stuff. But didn't actually see the point in pushing it that fast simply because there was no point pushing that fast to get there because there would be no enchanting materials. So obviously going into this expansion, we have the change in that enchanting materials now have a rank, which we didn't have in Dragonfly. And it's a big change because the only way you get those rank free materials is if you are specced deep into disenchanting. And this time in particular, but less people would be disenchanters because especially the farmers were sort of more pushed towards running tailoring and inscription builds for the Dark Moon card. So I thought we'd have less disenchanters and therefore we would be less likely to have rank free materials. So if I didn't, so I could rush and get to sort of unlock those rank free enchants very, very quickly, but then there's actually no rank free materials for me to do anything. Because of that, I don't want to rely on other people. Like the problem is when you're trying to do everything first, you can't really rely on other people to be doing anything anything for you. I basically set up two disenchanters. So these were basically two bis or near near enough bis disenchanters so that I could just spam disenchant. One of them was for dust, one of them was for rares. And I could spam disenchant and create my own sort of enchanting materials. At the start of the expansion and this is another reason why it was good i didn't have to do the engineering stuff because obviously it meant i didn't have to stop pilfering in order to, to disenchant which was uh, very helpful so i was going to set up two disenchanters then because i was setting up two disenchanters it seemed a bit weird to only have one enchanter because there's seven different ways you can go of enchanting and to to go through all that hassle of two disenchanters one art and security shuffle just for one set of enchanting. So in the end, I decided to go with two enchanters and go two different routes. So I decided I was definitely going to go for the Bis Ring enchants because they were absolutely amazing in Dragonflight. And I hadn't decided what I was going to do with the second one yet. So basically, I was just 
level it up to a point where it had enough knowledge points and then see what happened with the market and go to wherever I thought was going to be the best. That was the enchanting plan then. So two sort of enchanters look at craft rank three enchants sort of within 24, 48 hours of early access release. And then two disenchanters who were basically sort of, you know, 100 disenchanting skills, some rare profession gear um, and, you know, 60 points in disenchanting. One of them were uncommon, one of them rare. So I could uh, provide my own materials, basically. Going into this expansion, I actually had an unreleased video um, predicting that disenchanting would actually be sort of one of the best profession specs going in the expansion, basically because I didn't think people would actually... Um, really be running it that much because it's ne this enchanting last expansion wasn't really that great and i don't think people really got their heads around the fact that, that we've got these ranks on the enchanting materials now what actually ended up happening was because we had sort of these sort of really weird drop rates for the dark moon decks it sort of the market just got absolutely saturated with them the prices sort of hit rock bottom and people soon realised that disenchanting these was much better than selling them because the crystals were obviously, there's no other ways to, really to get sort of purple crystals that early in, in expansion. No reliable way, at least anyway, not until sort of raids and mythic plus open up. So people realised you could disenchant these and that's what started happening. We started getting a lot of people running disenchanting specs then to disenchant those. Like from there, I think people really started catching on that, you know, this disenchanting thing works quite well. And so people started running it for the um, for the dust and the shards as well. So people caught on for disenchanting a lot a lot quicker than I thought it was going to. But this actually sort of worked out as a benefit for me because it means I didn't actually have to run my disenchanters. So once again, it was another case if I prepped something, they were all good to go. I had these fantastic disenchanters set up, and they barely uh, they barely got used at all because everything was just getting flooded onto the auction house. Prices were crazy, but it didn't matter because my profit margins were crazy as well. So I didn't ha I could just pay the price. Um, so once again, something else I set up, barely used, but you can see the logic as to why I wanted to set them up before the expansion started. Being first to market was always going to be a bit weird in the war event. Concentration was always going to make like the whole thing a bit weird. So you are first to market because you're the first one that can craft them at rank three as many as you want then you get there and there's already some on the auction house so it was all it was a very um it was a very different situation previously where where literally i was the only one on the auction house that was listing all these items but and i always had a bit of a fear that because it was so easy to create these concentration builds that you was just going to see these sort of ridiculous uh undercutting wars to begin with uh, it didn't happen in that because people were only producing such small amounts i guess they're just not so desperate to sell so when you know the ring enchants were 100 150k weapon enchants were the same people weren't sort of like oh my god i'm not going to sell a better cut the price they just left them on there and they sold anyway you know and i know this because on my concentration characters i just sort of chucked stuff on the auction house 100 150k left it came back to them the next day and and, and it sold nicely so, like I said, my main targets was the Abyss Ring enchants, and I was going for, um, I decided to go for certain uh, weapon enchants as well. So the reason I targeted all of these was because all of these were recipe drops and they were not trainer or knowledge ones, you know, ones you got from the knowledge tray. So the, the reason this is important is because that means that, you know, Joe Bloggs can't set up 20 concentration alts and produce what I'm producing because he needs the recipe for each one of them. And especially early in the expansion when I'm doing the enchanting, the recipes are quite expensive. So Joe Blogs, you know, you can have less competition. And this is like, if you are crafting rank free stuff and you are concerned about dealing with sort of people's concentration army alts producing stuff cheaper than you, then you can always target stuff where it comes from recipes or something that's sort of there's more barriers to entry to get because it's quite easy for you to do it on one character so you can mass craft something but if they've got to do it 20 30 times on their alts to get something it's a lot more effort and a lot more cost 
if there are easier options and enchanting there definitely is easier options then people will tend to go for those and then you have less competition from the concentration alts that people have set up so i did i did make a video about saying about um enchanting concentration alts and they were absolutely freaking insane the first sort of first four or five days i set them up they were, they were expensive to set up because dust was expensive to begin with but like I said, 100, 150k, about 100k profit every time they use the concentration. Absolutely insane. So they more than made their money back the first time they used the concentration. And then from there, I was getting sort of, I only set four of these up, but it was like 100k every time they used concentration for like first sort of four or five days. Absolute madness. Such easy gold. Did I make 80 million from enchanting this time? Absolutely not. So the, the weirdest thing happened. So obviously we didn't know what sort of effect it was going to have on the markets having sort of this early access thing where we're splitting the player base. So none of us know how much of the player base actually bought this early access. And I don't think it's as much as a lot of us thought it was. Obviously I had all these um, bits and chants on the auction house sort of Saturday in the early access and hardly anything was selling i was getting maybe 300 400k in sales an hour which is you know you know it's fine but it's nothing i had i was running two auction house characters at the time and i had a situation whereby i had this character selling dragonflight engineering crafts was getting over 1.5 million gold an hour and i had this character selling bis ring and weapon enchants or the war within and it's selling like 500k gold an hour like baffles me absolutely baffles me how that's sort of the situation we ended up at but that's basically what it was so all these enchants were not selling now this isn't a case i, I see people comment sometimes that um it's all oh, the content doesn't need these enchants people don't want these enchants uh that, that's completely wrong so in dragonfly i was in the, exactly the same situation we had exactly the same content out, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and these things were just like selling at an insane rate. So it was not that; it must just be that the demand was low because the player base in the expansion was low, and this was sort of seen to be true as well. So when the um, expansion officially released on the Monday, the um, demand for these did go up quite a lot. So I would say I probably sold three hundred to 400% more of them, like three or four more times, um, definitely went up. But by this time, people had caught me up with the Enchanted End, and they were also mass producing rank free, so the prices had um, come down quite a bit by that point. Overall then, yeah, I made millions and millions from Enchanted. It was fine, it did well. Um, not as well as I wanted to, but it's fine. It was very different, but I learned a lot sort of about early access and things like that so maybe we have a situation where by rushing so quickly to first to market isn't such a big thing anymore if we've got this delayed early access thing so i made fine money on the saturday and the sunday you know and the monday daytime before the expansion was properly released but it wasn't great money and it wasn't worth probably I could have made more gold doing other things, setting up other things, if I'd have known what the demand was going to be like. And, you know, just sort of, you know, planning for my enchanting to not be sort of so much of a priority, knowing that it didn't need to be so much of a priority because the demand wasn't going to be so there. But that's a lesson learned for next time because, you know, Blizzard aren't going to stop doing an early access, the amount of money they've made from that. Then, so alchemy was one of the professions that interested me most in this expansion and that was because i find it more appealing because the amount of knowledge you needed to be able to craft at rank three was much higher than any other profession so you saw of enchanting 24 to 48 hours so really easy to craft in rank threes no issues whatsoever because you only need sort of that 70 knowledge point and that rare blue profession gear so alchemy is much harder you need sort of hundreds of knowledge points generally speaking so that means that you have more time to sort of 
get ahead of your competition if you are min max and stuff to the max. And because things have dragged out over a longer time period, it means that you can spend a longer time. It takes longer for people to catch up. Like with the enchanting, it takes you 24, 48 hours. So the people catch you up very quickly because it's a very quick process. So the longer the process is dragged out, the more knowledge you need, the longer it's going to take people to catch you up generally, and therefore the more gold you can make from it. So the only issue with alchemy was it seemed um, very RNG related. So basically your patron orders are very um, RNG as to what you get, etc., and how it's going to work out for you. So to be in a situation where you're pushing to be sort of the region first crafter, it's a lot down to RNG, unless you can get RNG to work in your favor. So we can't really make RNG work for us, but if we have enough rolls of the dice, then hopefully RNG will land where we want it to land. So my general plan or my original plan for alchemy going into this expansion was to level up alchemy on every single character uh, on my account. So that's 30 to 40 characters. I'm going to level up alchemy on every single one of them. So the ones that did really well with patron orders, we would carry that, we would push forward on those, you know, go for the artisan security shuffle, all that sort of stuff, push really hard. And those were going to be the ones that were pushing for this sort of region first crafts on the potions, especially the tempered potion um, and the flasks. Um, then the ones that didn't do very well, the ones that had, you know, crap RNG when it came to the patron orders, those were just going to get converted basically to blasphemite daily cooldown alts. And hopefully they could claw back the money I spent sort of investing to level them up as part of that. So that was basically the plan. Now, one of the lessons I learned from Dragonfly was not trying to do too much because you will end up in a situation where a lot of what you do isn't very good. So I felt like I had to sort of focus on what I was doing and I was already sort of doing quite a lot. The plan was for me to be doing quite a lot of engineering. So even though I didn't end up doing a lot with engineering, the plan was for me to be doing a lot with engineering. I was doing quite a lot with enchanting because I had four characters there. Also doing 30 or 40 characters with alchemy was just not going to be something I was able to do with the time that I had. So I decided not to do it in the end. I decided just to push forward with one alchemist just do as much as I possibly could and hope to see what happened with uh, RNG. Basically, I had crap RNG. I knew I wasn't going to be sort of hitting region first or anything like that on the crafts, in particular because there was a bug going around where people were able to sort of mini-exploit. We say mini-exploit, it was a blatant exploit but reset their patron orders to get more and more knowledge. So there was, no, there was no way I was going to be able to compete unless I did the exploit as well, which I wasn't going to do. I'm all for creative game sort of mechanics and things like that, like an artisan security shuffle, but I'm not going to outright sort of exploit to get knowledge. So I knew I, knew I couldn't win the race. So at that point, I converted it to um, someone crafting potions, but crafting potions sort of, bulk and being able to craft rank twos as cheap as possible so i did that sort of five or six days before raid release and it's massively uh stockpiling rank two potions now for the raid uh really low crafting costs i've got maybe 40 to 50 percent uh profit margin at the moment because obviously I've, i do have a lot of knowledge because i've put a lot of effort into the character it's had all its knowledge books, it's, 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 it's got all its perfect rare profession gear, etc. So it is a good crafter. And now it's a very good crafter of rank 2 potions. It's not going to craft rank 3 potions. It's not going to be anywhere near the first to craft rank 3 potions. It will be able to do it eventually. But it's doing a very good job of crafting rank 2 potions. It's, it's making lots of gold. That's what it was there for at the end of the day. So it's done its job. So I didn't get region first. 
I'm really, really glad I didn't push to do all those alchemists because if I'd have done that and then I'd have lost out because people were using an exploit to sort of just get as much knowledge as they wanted, then I will have been not happy, should we say. I put all that effort in, you know, 40 characters, all that gold, all that effort, and then just lose out because of that. If someone beats me because they beat me, that's that's fantastic. Congrats, well done, mate. If they beat me because of something like that, then that's that's annoying. But anyway, so the, the alchemist has done fine. He's earning lots of gold. He's not doing it how I wanted to do it, but this is what you have to deal with. You have to adapt to the situation. So engineering, I had a plan. Something changed. I changed my plan. Enchanting went pretty much the way I expected it to. I just didn't make as much gold as I thought it would do. But, you know, that's fine. Um, alchemy, the, the, the plan changed because I knew I wasn't going to get what I wanted. But that's it. You adapt it. It's not going to craft the rank 3s. Craft the rank 2s. Make them cheap. Whack them out. 40-50% profit margin. You can't complain. Do that all day. Especially on a raid release. So, now because... Now because of what happened with engineering and it freed up a lot of my time so i ended up in a situation whereby my engineers i didn't really need them my disenchanters i didn't really need them so my enchanters were all set up and got everything they needed in the first sort of day or two so the only profession that i was really pushing on was my alchemist and there was only so much i could do on that so i ended up in a situation where I actually had free time in the first week that I wasn't expecting to have. So what I ended up doing, I ended up setting up more crafters, and these were sort of more long-term crafters. So usually my approach of crafting is going quick, hard, make a lot of gold, and cash out. But I've set up some more long-term crafters this time. So I think what I'll do is, that was my plan and how it went, I think that'll do us for now. So, sorry to go on for so much. Just wanted to get it out there, what my plans were originally, what we ended up doing, etc, etc. Um, hopefully, some of you are still watching at this point. I've not bored you too much. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.